We'll just start that again. Sure. Do you mind if we actually start from the top? Because I just want to send them one thing. Sure. Okay. Yep. Hey everyone, welcome back to another exciting and inspiring episode of On Location with Zara, produced with the support of TELUS Story Hive, and we're so grateful to have had this amazing run of bringing so many talented, inspiring locals on our show uh, for the last nine months. And this is our last week of filming, live streaming now. And joining me today is someone really inspiring who's doing a lot of work in the community to support help and inspire a lot of us and you know Johnny Cantaveros he's also a neighbor we run into each other quite often and I knew before the show was done that I wanted to bring him on to dig deep with him and to see uh, how he's supporting many individuals out there as a high performance and purpose coach mm -hmm. so Johnny how long have you been in this field as a coach and what inspired you to pursue this path? Yeah, that's, uh, yeah, I was in the hospitality industry for 25 years working in nightclubs and it came to a point where I was looking at where I was at that moment in 2017 and based on my habits and behaviors and my lifestyle, the future didn't look great for me. So I decided to step away from the hospitality industry and go cold turkey which is kind of rare uh, and, and challenging and you know there's still days where I feel like it would be interesting to go back into the industry and see what it's like based on what I've learned uh, but it came to a point where where my health was going and where my lifestyle was going I needed to make a big change and I, I started doing meditations I found out about this uh, person maybe you've heard of him Dr. Joe Dispenza mm -hmm and start doing his work and I felt there's levels of connection and love that uh, you know just me talking about it right now I can remember how visceral that was for me and if that's what love and connection is about this whole thing in the hospitality industry that I was striving for and searching for uh, just didn't align with me so I started asking the universe which I've never done before at that time based on the experience that I had in the nightclub industry on how I can really live autonomously, how I can create, uh, you know, a, a lifestyle for myself, and uh, really put my energy towards building my brand and building what I believe in, what I'm passionate about. So, I became a certified high performance coach with uh, Brendan Bouchard. Uh, then I got into hypnotherapy uh, with Marissa Peer. So I became a rapid transformational therapy practitioner, and just recently. Actually, not recently, but in the past three years, I've been working with a high priest out of Bali uh, named Ratunabe, and we're uh, putting his his work, his energy work, into uh, the Western population with my teacher Jason Stefino. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah, that's amazing. So that's such a big shift to go from working in the nightclub industry. You know, um, that's how we met many many years ago. Yeah. Um, I've talked about on here before and uh, I know for me like when and how the decision came I was studying acting especially doing a lot of voice work breath work mm -hmm. and like really getting in touch with my instrument with the body and like feeling different feelings and once you like really have this release you really start to intuitively realize what is in alignment yeah. and what is not. And I think in that moment in time, I realized and recognized that um, for me to work in the bars and like ju just seeing like the things that go on and like being up till four or five in the morning <laughs> yeah. and, you know, it's like yeah. now I wake up early morning, you know, with the sun, my little fur babies they wake me up so I can feed them yeah but it's just such a different life yeah. yet the money that we make is like you know we make like really good money like really mm -hmm. fast and mm -hmm. it was it's certainly like hard to say no to that so tell me about the work that you're doing with clients now like as a coach as yeah. a purpose coach and 
Um, what does that work look like? Are you mostly working with men? Are you working with women as well? Like, mm -hmm. what what sort of clients are you working with, and what are you assisting them with? Yeah, yeah, great question. When I first started, uh, I wanted to work with anybody and everybody, uh, just because you know that was my lifestyle. If you took a look at the room that I would be managing or running, it would just have everybody, right? And being able to cater to that, I learned uh, over the past few years that. Uh, there, there's specific needs that I think are important right now and I, I'm, I'm really focusing and working with men mm. that's, a, that's a big focus of mine on where we can find their capability their capacity and uh, where they can find their purpose because I've worked uh, with former professional athletes that are going into a new career and with a professional athlete they're so used to having everything done for them all they need mm. to do is focus on what they're good at so now that they're in this in this arena where they're the business where they have to create all this it's it's about creating systems it's about creating uh, belief structures uh, and helping them understand how to use what they've done as a professional athlete and how can they transform that into their careers so working with men is a big focus of mine and that's not to say i'm not working with women I'm just more focused on men because of, uh, I don't know if you know the statistics right now, and these aren't truths like, I don't know the full statistics, but you know the majority of suicides are men. The majority of people that are you know, suffering right now are men, and that's not to take away anything from women because we all have our, our phases and have these, these moments that we go through, but yeah, helping, helping men find purpose, helping men really connect to self-love, and I'm doing combination work where I'm using uh, hypnotherapy to help them understand their traumas and what made them believe that this is the result that they're worthy of or not worthy of. So being able to help them uplift and take away those root causes like I'm not good enough, uh, I'm not worthy, I'm different. So therefore, even though I think I see success around me, it's not available to me or that, I'm, that it's hopeless, so why bother? So when we take away those, those, those core beliefs away, then all of a sudden I employ them with uh, really great habits, mindsets, and just changing people's perspectives. Because once you see change perspectives, then the opportunities are endless. Mm. Right? So, so yeah, that's, that's what I'm primarily working with right now. Um, I have clients that I've had for long term, for a long time to people that have just met me yesterday. Yeah. So it, it's, been, it's been a really powerful, beautiful, challenging, ugly, gorgeous, beautiful, gross, shameful, you know, you mentioned yeah, like you're talking about all the feelings, man, like- Because once up. the portal opens up and you haven't felt those feelings, it's a lot, you know? Yeah. Um, like on the show, I openly talk about being sober and it's like this year I'm celebrating 10 years. Mm -hmm. And you know, and especially during COVID, we got to talk a lot about mental health and yeah. wellness and uh, you know, all the coping skills we did not learn in school. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, like I wanna say that, okay, trigonometry is like not something that I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a creative, like I'm not the math adding person, yet at the same time, I do think that um, there is a shift happening because the more and more we're seeing um, people talk about men's mental health and wellness, the importance of expressing how you feel mm -hmm. or having like men's groups or circles, whatever you want to call them. Yeah. I noticed that you're doing some work with Dr. Tomek. That's and correct. Um, you know, some live sessions on Instagram or mm -hmm. workshops. And I think to remove the stigma yeah. um, and getting away from the mindset of like the bro, the gym bro mm -hmm. mindset. And mm -hmm. I don't have any feelings. I just have muscles. I look great. Right. I have a nice car, right. beautiful girlfriend mm -hmm. versus like, because you can achieve all those things and once you get all those things and if when you still feel empty yeah you know and i and it's not just saying i feel like like correct me if i'm wrong if you feel the same way i feel that you know even for me like the journey still continues it's mm -hmm. not like okay now you have arrived i'm working on several shows a documentary and possibly like you know 
God willing, going to Paris for the Olympics and yeah. working on several different projects. And, you know, you think that, okay, when I get to this place, mm -hmm. I'm going to feel accomplished. Right. You right. get there and you're with people who are doing this and this and this more than you. And then you have your friends back home who are sending you messages like, oh my God, I'm so jealous. And I've been in situations where I was at the Cannes Film Festival. Mm -hmm. Sorry, my dog is in the crate and he's low-key, s'il te plaît, Baba, s'il te plaît. You can't be a good boy and that's not how you get out. Afterwards, mommy gonna take you out. He, he will learn, this is how we learn. Um, and I remember being at the, at the Cannes Film Festival a couple of years ago and I was getting messages like, I'm so envious of you, I'm so jealous of your life. And the meanwhile, I was just going through a heartbreak. Like mm. I was going through a breakup and I was performing during the daytime and at nighttime I'm by myself and I'm like, you know, having my feels. Mm -hmm. And that's a real thing, mm -hmm. right? Especially when you're not taking something to numb what's happening. Sure. You have to feel the feelings. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and uh, I'm glad you brought that up, is that a big phase that's been really important for me and what I take my clients through and help them understand this is that when you're coming from a place of proving yourself, like I was in the hospitality mm. industry, then, you know, I'm always going to do things to prove. I'm going to do things to, you know, show that I can do it. Whereas opposed to now, where I'm coming in a place of worthiness and enoughness, I'm just sharing who I am. Mm. I'm just sharing what I've learned. I've been sharing what my gifts are. And if that if that makes sense to you and you want to work with me, great. Uh, if you don't, that's okay too. Yeah. Because, you know, this, this sense of rejection is deep within our system. And when we're at this young age, you know, we give our authority of how how worthy we are to others to tell us how worthy you are and then we carry that through our lives so you know when you're when you're looking to prove that you're a good person then or you're looking to fill up uh, an empty space as opposed to over allowing it to overflow then you put yourself I'll put myself in situations that didn't align with who I really was but because I committed to this place of proving that I can I do jobs, I do certain things just to do it. Mm. And I put myself in situations that I didn't want to work, but I did it because I wanted to stick to what I said I was going to do as well as, um, as well as prove it to people where, you know, when you stop trying to prove yourself to people and share who you are, I mean, don't get me wrong, for me to say that in one sentence, it took a lot of work and a lot of uh, truth and a lot of acceptance to get to saying, I am good enough. I might just not be able to accomplish this now or be there now, but that has nothing to do with how worthy or how, how good enough I am. Mm. Um, and that's the deeper inner work, you yeah. know, and it's the inner child work, like I like to call it. Mm -hmm. um, I'm reading a few books that are just behind us, but we won't mention them. Mm -hmm. um, but they're all about um, I remember doing this workshop, it was around, um, it's called the Performer's Mastery. And this is like many, many years ago, like I think 15 plus years ago. And I know like I've always been a seeker, like my first show that I did, which was after studying yoga in Bali, mm -hmm. it was all about like spirituality and healing and Eastern healing practices and wow. like getting into the why of people because I do feel like um, individuals who find certain amount of success um, they find it a because of resilience B, they've overcome something and C, um, I find those conversations very fascinating when you know we can open up and dig deep and be and when the audience hears a story especially when it's someone for example they see on television or someone like you who had this past and now they're going and inspiring others mm. that you know it makes the person go like maybe I can make the change too yeah. Perhaps that is invoking something inside yeah. of me that I can make a change in my life because I'm feeling stuck. That's because right. I think it's through conversations. Like I feel like conversations are so important mm -hmm. and they can be so life changing. Like, you know, it's like individuals like Oprah and now, you know, we have podcasts. Mm -hmm. Like podcasts that are, you know, like whether you heard Joe Dispenza and I heard someone else and we hear these stories and we go like, 
yes, me too. We listen to an audio book yeah. or read a book and we go like, me too. I went through that as well. And perhaps mm -hmm. I can overcome it like you have. Yeah. You know? Yeah. 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 No, definitely. And I think that's a, that's a big thing is, you know, for the people that are, that are watching this is to really look at how you can get to a place of uh, feeling and understanding that you were all this unique mm. spirit, this unique soul that if you take a look at history, there's nothing like you mm. before in the future and there's no, nobody like you now, right? Mm. So, you know, when we step into this level of uniqueness, there's the, there's, it's like you're part of this fabric. You're not on the outside looking in. Mm. If you're coming from a place of not good enough or different, you're like the viewer, you're not the participant. And we're all participants here and um, yeah it, it, it when you're able to get to that place and see the uniqueness in everybody uh, then all of a sudden it becomes more inspiring as opposed to competition or jealousy mm, or envy. 100 yeah. percent so i'll tell you an interesting story um for me um like one of my um one of the hosts of another show that i'm working on he posted over the weekend about going to Paris for the Olympics. Mm -hmm. My initial reaction right away is like, why him, why not me? Mm -hmm. Which is envy. And then I was like, I, I already knew I wanted to bring him on, the sh on my show because I respect people who are very involved in the community, who are doing the work, mm -hmm. who are, you know, because it's through this, mm -hmm. when we have this sit down, it also takes away the otherness of someone. You know, it brings people together. So I just run into this guy randomly, like uh, last week today. And then on the weekend he posted about Paris and I was like, you know, I'm so proud of you is what I said to him, congratulations. Mm -hmm. And then I said, hey, do you wanna just like go for a walk or meet for coffee with me? And I told him my initial feelings. Yeah. But I'm like, I'm using this as inspiration. That's right. I just want you to know you really inspire me. So then he ended up sharing his story of going to all these Olympics and this and that and that. And I'm like, the old me mm -hmm. would just keep all these feelings inside and then it would be hidden in yeah. the dark. And that's how it festers and that's how it guts into the negative. Mm -hmm. Versus it's the same feeling because you can take it in the positive or the negative. Yeah, that's right. And being like, okay, you know what? The work that you're doing Mm. is so moving to me I want to be like you yeah I love the fact that you've gone to all these different Olympics and covered them that's right and now we're looking at working together yeah yeah isn't yeah. that isn't that amazing how you just open up allow yourself to be seen connect with this feeling I could have just kept it inside and sure. been like okay I'm having this feeling like this person's like good for them I'm like a female BIPOC and like, you know, yeah. I'm not getting the opportunity versus this individual who's Caucasian male is, I right. can let that be my narrative. That's right. Or I can switch it around. That's right. That's right. Like I, I, I that's been a, the long journey. Yeah. Yeah. And once, once you start experiencing the other side of it, where this old, this old belief that uh, survival of the fittest. Mm. It's it's not it's not that. That's like that's the lower that's the lower vibration of survival of the fittest where it's you know, there's enough to go around for everybody. Yeah. And it's about collaboration. Yeah. And they're seeing there there's more research and studies showing how nature collaborates. They don't compete. Mm. And that it's an ecosystem. Mm-hmm. And where where we're at right now when it comes to when we're in the survival it's very competitive mm. it's very like you know it's going to be at the cost mm. their success is at the cost of my success mm. that's not that's not the case mm -hmm. it's like there's enough to go around do you go through a lot of that like when you're working with men um so i want to talk a little bit about like what i know you touch based on mm -hmm. this like how exactly are you working with individuals? Like are you, yeah. you know, what is like an initial meeting with you like? I know mm -hmm. you work on, a, on with hypnotherapy as well, which I'm a big believer in by the yeah. way. Um, because on my very first show, Life in Salazar, I met with a hypnotherapist yeah. and then we started working together and he was, he helped coach me to start my own business, yeah. my consulting, yeah. like, and helped me shift my mind 
from just being an artist and just being because when you're on the spiritual path and also an artist you're just focused on creating your work mm -hmm. like when it comes to the money element and marrying them together yep. is like yeah you know and to be like hey i'm worthy of getting paid for my work yeah and like he helped me a lot switching my mindset yeah that's very you important know? that's very important and i think you see a lot of that in in the realm that we're in is mm. the um you know if you have this belief that money is evil mm. or you're not worthy of it yet you're doing spiritual work yeah think of all the options that you have when you have money to help people yes what your reach becomes or you, you can take that extra time to give more because you have more and not from a place of unworthiness from a place of you know money is ultimately a language it's a, mm. it's a way of communication mm. and the more money you have the more options you have yeah and it, it as a i understand the two sides of it right and that's the dichotomy of of being in the place of spirituality and being in the western world so when in spirituality at that one side where it's like oh you know we shouldn't have to work with money well you know you're living in this world and yes of course there's ways you can get around that but overall you know if i have a hundred dollar bill any us in the world i don't need to say anything yes right so there's yeah. this level of language that's that's common and it's money and it's okay to, to have money in fact it's your duty to have money in the spiritual world yeah as, like, as as a whole person yeah right because that's going to allow you to offer options build centers mm. provide scholarships be of service that's right you know it's it's fascinating because on my show like mostly i have worked with a camera operator that who i've hired and like we got funding for the show and then you know that part we were done and there were a few times that someone was like well just do the streaming you know just do the work and I was like I'm gonna do high quality work and it also makes me feel really good mm -hmm. to be able to hire someone else yeah. bring them on knowing that I am and when you're able to hire individuals or hire people it's it's love mm -hmm. it's that energy of like abundance that you're giving or even it's the same as having someone on my show mm -hmm. it's you know sometimes it's like yeah you don't know that person needs the support of like coming on and having this light on them or perhaps having this conversation that will change their day or month or whatever because conversations especially since covid like having human interaction and human connection and sitting next to each other without a mask without being six feet apart is yeah so much it's it's well, massive yeah that was that was a big thing on you know what the the after effects of of covid what it did it's like one day we can go in elevators and we can talk to each other we could shake hands and everything was safe mm. then all of a sudden the door handles weren't safe mm. coughing wasn't safe uh you know walking and talking wasn't safe so all of a sudden our nervous system is getting wrecked because what our eyes see and what the media tells us is completely different so all of a sudden we close down we shut down in those years our nervous system shuts down our, our part of our will shuts down um, and we get into this survival mode and and through that you know, being able to be in this and telling people that there is a way out and mm. there is community, that there is, we don't have to settle for that anymore. And, uh, you know, my biggest growth has been the past four years. Mm -hmm. And it's because of the work that I'm doing as well as opening up my eyes to what else is out there, mm -hmm. not settling for status quo. Yeah, I know, completely agree. Yeah. Um, so going back to the work that you're doing, we're talking about inner child work. Mm -hmm. And so when someone comes to see you, for example, it's an entrepreneur, like yep. imagine that he's doing really well. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you look at and perhaps because it obviously takes people time to like open up as well. Sure. Especially I feel 
you know, if someone is like at the top of their game or mm -hmm. whatnot or an athlete and, you know, they've learned all their lives to just be super high performing yeah. and like not feel, yeah. you know, or even if you're having your feeling, you push it aside, push you know, and to be honest, I feel like as I'm even saying that, I'm also talking about myself, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like yeah. the last time I was in Paris, I was like, I had just finished working on a show. We had done 50 interviews mm -hmm. live, five mm -hmm. zero, in a span of four months for Tell a Story Hive. And the whole time my nutrition, my eating was quite bad. I was doing a lot of like eating fried foods sure. and drinking a lot of coffee, like given I don't smoke or drink or anything like that. But it's like, I wasn't getting, meeting my nutritional needs, mm -hmm. so to say. And then when I go to Paris, I'm sick the whole time and I have all these brands I need to make content for. Right. And I am sick. Like when I'm saying I'm sick, I'm like burning up, I'm shaking, like, yeah. you know, but clients have already paid me and I have to deliver. That's right. So it's like, even though, and I'm the type of person who's very much like, I'm a person on my word. Mm -hmm. So I'm doing this work, these photo shoots and this beautiful stuff. I'm sick as a dog. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay, mind over matter, just push through. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, a change needed to be made, sure. which was around nutrition and self-care and learning to slow down and relax. Yeah. Because so many times you're just like, go, go, go. Right. And that is so much of like that nervous system, somatic, like deeper work that uh -huh. is like, what does it mean uh -huh. when I slow down? Uh -huh. What does that say? Uh -huh. <laughs> Why can I not slow down? <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. Well. You know, some of the things that I've done and I've learned through through this work and you know, the working with Brendan Burchard and becoming a certified high performance coach and you know, he studied all the biggest uh, successful people and mm. what I mean by sort of high performing people and what how he defines it, how we define it is that it's you know, not at the cost of your health, your mm. friends, your friendships, your relationships or joy. Because mm. Far too often, how many do we hear? Oh, we've got you know these millionaires, but they're miserable. Mm. And what I've learned through that is vitality and energy. If you don't have energy, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter like what you, the projects that you have on the go. If you don't have the energy, it's it, it's energy. You, know, you, mm -hmm. you that's what you need to to be vital, to be present, to to make decisions that that are ideal and that are strategic and that makes sense for the 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 big goal and the vision and that can't happen when you're exhausted when you're tired and you're malnourished so you know taking a look at i think you've heard about this before but be doing block timing having you can go through those those straight things but making sure blocking your time and then taking five to ten minutes in in between that block time like you're saying to do breath work to do movement to do meditation and that's going to give yourself a reset and it's going to allow your body to actually go stronger and longer mm -hmm. yeah and that's the change that i've noticed for me this year mm -hmm. it's been like i made some big like you know like workout at as a must like yep. i also go on like long walks mm -hmm. but like making big changes around food around like what i'm consuming like am i eating you know cutting out gluten yep. adding you know more greens and more protein into my mm -hmm. diet and like when you make those changes like it's like i'm working on actually more projects this year than i was last year right you know but being able to be present and knowing that because when you're not constantly putting in like fried food or yeah. drinking like coca-cola or whatever sure. Sure. it just makes and of course supplementing too like i do that as well yeah but, you know, it's different when you're in your 20s. When you're in your 40s, different story. Sure. I, you know, if I can add to that, I, I believe and have experienced and there's research showing that it's more important in the mindset of what you're e how you're eating things. Mm. It's like, if I think this is bad for me, mm. right, I give the energy and I give it permission to be bad mm. for me. So uh, instead of saying, this is the most nutritious thing that I can have mm. in this moment, and I will enjoy it. Enjoy it. Yeah. So whatever it is, I love that it's intuitive eating yeah. because um, I was seeing a coach and he's so lovely and amazing, mm -hmm. and they were training me, and you know they were just like cut out gluten, cut out sugar, like all of this, like you right. know, and eating more, and that was fine, but I did find for me after some time that 
I want to have the joy of like when I'm in Italy, I want to eat pasta. Yeah. Or like if I feel like eating a croissant, I want to eat it without there being this shameful feeling right. of, but am I eating three croissants a day? Different story. Sure. But if I'm having a croissant or two or whatever in a week, like to enjoy it. Like the other day I had ice cream and part of me was like, after not having sugar for three and a half months, yeah, yeah. boy, do you, <laughs> do you feel the difference? Right. So still with sugar, I'm kind of like, I'd much rather have like two ripe mangoes. Yeah, of course. You know, having the natural form. Sure, but yet, if it's not available. Yes, wanna. It, 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 it's okay and I was telling myself, you know what, it's okay, honey. Yeah. It's a hot day yeah. and telling the inner child it's okay. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the big thing is like when we start eating out of fear, then you make that food fuel your fear. And, you know, I'm not a nutritionist. I'm not a dietitian. And I really want to make sure that I clear that. Mm -hmm. I just understand that through working with energy on the slightest things that you can do through that it makes a big difference. Mm. You make a shift, you make a subtle shift. I, I talk to my clients about this all the time. It's like, when you fly a plane, if you're off by two degrees, over long term, you're gonna end up in Tobago, not Jamaica, Yes. right? So it's, it's these subtle things that we do that make big changes over time. Mm. You know, we're very, like for me, I was, when I first started this energy work, I was all about more, 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 consume more, do more healings, whereas the past few years it's been more about, okay, just integrate, take the time, then, then just allow things to happen and really focus on the intention and focus on what my vision is. Mm -hmm. And then whatever is meant to happen, whether I get rejected or whether they work with me, that's all part of it. That's all part of the learning of mm -hmm. this, of the self. Amen. Yeah. Um, and I think it's so much of, um, you know, I, uh, I think because of knowing you and mm -hmm knowing of you but not really obviously sure. knowing you um from like 20 years ago to you sitting down now and noticing the peace in your face and yeah. the contentment it's just like a different person right but yeah. it's the journey that we're on i'm sure someone who knew me 20 years ago hopefully that's what we want that yeah. oh you are you seem like you're in such a different space like you seem so peaceful but it's like also bringing that softness you know, around me, like I've just recently decided to get back to teaching yoga because I realized, and I remember going on this date and someone saying, yes, just because you don't have enough things to do. And I'm like, you know what? There's a service element to teaching yeah. that I feel like I'm transported into a different dimension, not to like woo woo, but I feel like I'm in that hypnosis phase. Yeah. Like whatever I'm teaching, I am there with them because I'm not, teaching for the element of like so you would get a nice exterior you know i'm mm -hmm. teaching where it's inner healing and you know what ends up happening people are having emotional releases in mm -hmm. my class and you know i would say affirmations and i know for a lot of women like words like i'm good enough i am safe yeah it is okay for me to breathe deep yeah yeah that's huge it's so simple yeah. And you know when I do that, it's also for me to hear it. Of course. Because the things that I say, the whole healer heal thyself, the yeah. teacher learns what they wanna what they need to learn. And you know, people are coming up to me and sharing some deep personal things and to know the fact that I can be there to support them. Mm -hmm. Like I wanna continue with my this, because this work is part of my purpose, but I feel like that's also part of my purpose is to like share and you know, I, it for me it comes down to stories and sharing with yeah. people and the human connection. Yeah, yeah. Before we let you go, is there something that you can share with us uh, that we haven't touched on? Obviously, well, you know, on the, uh, when we upload this on YouTube, mm -hmm. we'll put a link to your uh, Instagram and how people can yeah. get in touch with you. But something that we haven't touched on today that you would like to share with our audience? Yeah, you know, I'm uh, I'm a Shiva Murti healer and. You know, this is something that I never thought I'd be doing after the story that I told you. And this energy work is a very powerful energy work. And I'm one of the pioneers uh, bringing it into the Western world. And uh, 
I'd love for people to experience this. I do socials in person and online. So there's a, a bunch of us healers that do these online healing socials uh, to spread this, uh, this modality. And uh, I'd love for people to, to experience and see what they think and uh, see what happens quickly when you're working with energy as opposed to you know, the material world. I love how when you said that, Lily, my cat, started moving close. Yeah. Um, well, thank you so much, Johnny, for coming by. Yeah. I love the fact that you were able to make time for us today. Yeah. You were able to join us and you know share your story with our audience. Yeah. And if you folks uh, found it inspiring, I like it's like living on a farm, except we're in a par we're in a condo in Yeltsin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we have all the animals here. Yes, that's right. So, um, if you folks found it inspiring, if it moved you in any way, please feel free to get in touch. I will share Johnny's contact information. Um, you can check it out. You know his social media, all of that. We'll link it up. Johnny Cantaveros, I'm saying your name. It's so funny because even from back in the day, I'm so used to seeing your name, Mr. Johnny Can. That's right. Yeah. I'm like, I'm pretty sure it's short for something. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, thank you so much. Thanks for bringing your beautiful energy here, for sharing your story with us and with our audience. And until next time, I'm your host, Zara Durrani, and I'll catch you on On Location with Zara on Tell a Story High. Ciao. Ciao. I think there's someone outside waiting.